Hello family, I am Pula Mons, your inner peace and purpose coach. So I've been wondering what to do with this podcast, where to take it, the direction it needs to take. And um, recently I felt God saying it needs to be the resting place. So you, I will be using this podcast from now going forth to speak on spiritual matters, uh, to speak on how we as women can get into the resting place of God. As women who are facing so many things in the world, we are everything to everyone we've got too many roles that we are attached to we've got too many roles that we need to play in different people's lives so ultimately once we've done all of that we need to get to a point where we do it from a resting place and this is the idea that i got uh, when i was in in my quiet time while listening for God and I felt really strongly in my spirit that that is what this podcast should do and the first message that I have for you for today is the resting place <laughs> which is the name of the podcast I'm gonna be reading from the book of Ezekiel 20 to 22 20 to 22 and it reads as follows from the New King James Version when they came to the nations wherever they went they profaned my name, my holy name. When they said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they have gone out of his land. 21. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations wherever they went. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, verse 22. Thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O holy Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. I'll go to 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. I will leave it at 23. <laughs> I hope... Um, I will use this space for what it's meant to do. I don't know who needs this, but I really feel strongly in my heart that somebody needs this kind of deep, uh, this kind of spiritual upliftment, this kind of intentional spiritual upliftment. <laughs> you know, as women, we go through a lot. As women, we endure a lot of things. So I just want to go back quickly, just a short um, summary of how we got to verse 22 of Ezekiel. So here God is talking about the children of Israel because because of their disobedience, God has sent them, scattered them to different nations. He had basically thrown them out of the promised land, Canaan, that he had given them because they even, they brought all their beliefs. They brought um, the things that they used to do in Egypt into Canaan and constantly he kept on 
warning them you know he kept on sending messages via the prophets for the children of israel to come back to him and to worship him alone but they continued to worship other gods of other nations so eventually god got to the point where he was sick of it he was tired of these children disobeying him and he scattered them all over the place but the problem is when they were out there people knew that they were israelites people knew that they were the children of god and nations were saying about them when they saw them in their different nations they were saying how come are god's children in our land why are they not in god's land where they're supposed to be so God here is saying on verse 20 to 23, it says, because now when people talk about the children of Israel, they put my name in that sentence, then that uh, profanes my name. That brings disrepute to my name. So in order for God to restore his holy name in order for God to make sure that his name is honored by all these nations that know him because of the things that he's done for the children of Israel. He's saying, you know what? I wanted to punish you. I wanted you to feel how it feels how a child should feel when they are disobedient to their parent. But now when you're out there, people, when they start talking about me, it means now my name, my holy name is being dragged in the mud. Verse 21. Verse 22, sorry. So tell them, he tells prophet Ezekiel, tell the children of Israel what I'm about to do for them. What I'm about to do in their lives is not for them. It is for my name's sake. What I'm about to do in their lives is not for them. It is for my name's sake. Because I want all these nations to know that my name is still holy. I want all these nations to understand that I'm still God. I want all these nations to realize that I haven't lost the battle. I haven't lost the war. I'm still the God of all nations. I'm still in control. So I'm going to save them. I'm going to bring them back into my land. But not for their own sake, but for my name's sake. My message for today is the resting place. You know, we, in fighting all these battles that we are trying to fight, in being all these roles that we are trying to be for everybody that uh, are in our lives, we find ourselves sometimes doing things that we're not supposed to do. You know, the kind of things where God tells you, be still and know I'm God. When you are wanting a baby, like your, your life, your marriage depends on this pregnancy. I mean, your in-laws are just not giving you a break. You need a child, but God on the other side is telling you to be still. It has been five years, Lord. I've been praying for this child. It has been 10 years of this marriage. I haven't had peace because my in-laws are up in my business, are up in my case. They want me to have a child. They are even saying right now to my husband, he must have a second wife. God, you're telling me to be still even today. 
So you know what, Lord? I'm tired of being still. I'm going to make a plan. I heard ab about a certain doctor in Joburg. I heard about a certain doctor in China. I heard about a certain medication that I take that will make me more fertile. And I will do that. I heard about some traditional mix that I'm going to drink up so that I make sure that I'm fertile because, Lord, I am tired of being still. When all these weapons are against me. As women, we carry the burden of our children. You've got a child that is out of order right now. You and your child are not in sync. You cannot speak their language. They do not speak the kind of language that you understand. Hey, they are only but a teenager. They are messed up. They are trying to find themselves. And in finding themselves, they find themselves in Drug abuse, alcohol abuse, skipping school, being bullies. They do all sorts of things that tear you apart. You've fought with your child. You've banged them against the wall. You've taken a belt and hit them. You've asked the church to come pray for him. You've asked interventions from the ladies to pray with you. You've done it all. You're at a point where you're saying, you know what, God, I don't know if you're really there because <laughs> I've been praying. I've been worshiping. I've, I've been doing everything that I, you said I must do. But look at my child now. Now people are saying, maybe she's pretending. Maybe this is this holy life that she she." pretends to have outside it's not actually the kind of life that she's living in her home that's why her child is like this people are saying things about me people are saying where is her god lord i'm tired are you even there do you even exist we've got issues in our marriages you do everything that you can do. Everything that a submissive woman should do. You are as submissive as they come. You are a CEO. You are a manager in your business. You are a business owner. You are a manager, sorry, in your company. Yet when you come home, you are a submissive woman. You do everything that is expected of a wife. And yet your husband still goes astray he still cheats he still messes you up he still drags your name in the mud you are the laughing stock of people in your community because he goes even next door not even far next door and you're starting to get to a point where you're saying you know what maybe i should go check and um, from traditional doctors maybe they can tell me exactly what is going on because i've been praying lord i've been fasting i've been reading scripture i've been believing but this i've come to a point where i'm done i've come to a point where i don't believe that you exist so i'm going to get other alternatives and you actually do it you find other alternatives you find people to come in and you know cleanse your home you find spiritual people to come throw water all over the place you can't you get traditional people to come uh, cleanse the bad spirits that are in your home because you are heavy burdened as a mother as a woman trying to make it in this crazy society of ours where women are still disrespected you are in the same position as your male counterpart but you find yourself aiming less these are the kind of battles that you have to fight at work or you find yourself being in a position where you are one of the best employees that they have but time and time again when it's promotion time lord they overlook me they take people that I have trained. They make them my bosses time 
and time again. You know, if it was once, I would understand. If it was twice, I would understand. But now this is the seventh time in the same company where I'd, I have had to train people who later became my managers. Lord, where are you? I have been tithing. I have been working as though unto the Lord. I have been diligent in everything that I do, yet I don't see the fruit of my labor. Then I start kissing God. There are so many things that can make us move away from the grace. There are so many things that can make us profane the name of the Lord. Intentionally so. You know, it's something else we talk about, the things that we do and we don't realize. But the things that we say, Lord, I am tired. Clearly you are not there. I'm going to find other ways of dealing with my situation. And intentionally, we go against the will of God. Because that's what the children of Israel were doing. They were intentionally going against the will of God. And over and over again, he kept reminding them. He kept rebuking them, but they wouldn't listen. So God is saying to us today, you've intentionally disobeyed me. You've intentionally brought shame to my name. When people you're around you, your neighbors know you as a godly woman, all of a sudden they saw a Sangoma walking into your home. You've intentionally dragged my name in the mud. But you know what? Because now your neighbors are asking the question, Is, isn't she the child of God? Why isn't she getting pregnant? Isn't she the child of God? Why is her marriage like this? Isn't she the child of God? Why is her child misbehaving? Isn't she the child of God? Why is her teenage daughter pregnant right now? Isn't she the child of God? Why is she stagnant in her career? Isn't she the child of God? They say. <laughs> God says, at that point, when they start talking about your situation and they put my name, my holy name, in that messy situation of yours, at that point, they, did not, they do not declare war against you, but actually they are declaring war against me. The God of all creation. God says, understand that when you start overhearing people talk about you, that is a moment where he jumps up to your defense because not only are they coming against you, now they've put God's name in it. And when they put his name in it, they are coming against him as well. And when God is in it, then that is a time for us to take a resting place. Woman, you've been through it all. You've gone against the will of God intentionally and unintentionally. But understand that what you have heard people say about you, God is saying, they didn't just say it about you, but they said it about me, your God. And when they start speaking about my name, my holy name, then they've declared war. Take your resting place, woman. This is the time for you to take your resting place. Understand that now God is in it. God has jumped in for his name's sake. He will rescue you. He will deliver you from whatever it is that you're struggling with because he is, has taken these gossips, the gossip out there. He has taken all these negative 
words that people have been talking about your situation. And he has made it personal. So when God starts working, that is a good time for me and you to start resting. That is a good time for me and you to start resting. You know, as I was studying, I heard, I heard God saying, when you hear them talking about you, know that that's the time that you need to rest because I'm in it. Immediately they start saying something about you. Then I jump into that situation. You can take your resting place. When they start talking, that's a sign for you to take your resting place. When you start overhearing people talking and saying bad things about you behind your back, that is the time, that is a sign for you to find your resting place. When you are publicly embarrassed and you call yourself a child of God, that is a sign that you need to take your resting place. When everything is coming against you, you feel like nothing will ever be well with you. People start mocking you. They start embarrassing you. They start speaking ill of you. When they start speaking, understand that is a sign that God is already in it. It is time for me and you to take the rest in place. Where is our resting place as women who are heavy burdened? Our resting place is in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our resting place is in our war rooms. The resting place is in the scriptures. The resting place is in the standing still. And watch God at work. The resting place is in our praise in the midst of a storm when they expected us to crumble because they know that we overheard them talking about us and our situation. And tomorrow they see you and you are praising. You are still singing your praises to God. That is our resting place. When you're supposed to be upset and angry with God. And yet you go out there and tell people about the goodness of the Holy God. The grace and mercy that he's shown you in your life. And they will ask you, what mercy? Look at your child. What mercy? Look at your husband. What mercy? Look at you. You still don't have a child. What mercy? You still failing that same subject. What mercy? You still in that same position you were in five years ago. What mercy are you talking about? And then you tell them, you wait and see. I'm in my resting place because God has just jumped into the situation. God has just come in into the situation. And when he jumps in, I take my resting place because I know it is finished. It is finished. No need for me to worry anymore. No need for me to be anxious about my situation anymore. No need for me to try and fix things in my own capacity anymore. No need for me to try and drink things that will make me fertile anymore. I'm taking my resting place. I'm going to sing about the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to give praise to his name. And that is my resting place. I'm going to make disciples of all nations. How come is that a resting place? 
You see, as you're talking about the goodness of God to other people, as you're making disciples of all nations, as you're singing God's praises when you're supposed to be complaining, as you're going to scripture for the truth when you're supposed to be hearing the truth in the streets, as you're trusting God with your situation, then there's no internal battle anymore. <laughs> there's no internal battle anymore. When you start singing God's praises, then you are aligning to the person that you really are. You stop fighting. Your soul becomes restful. When you start telling people about the goodness of God, what he has done in your life, not only are you telling them, but you are reminding yourself that, you know what, I've been focusing on this one thing that I don't have, but actually look at what God has done in my life. As you're telling people about the mercy and grace of God, then you're reminding your soul that has been um, through unrest, that actually it can rest. It should take its resting place. Because you've seen him win battles before. Because you see, when God jumps in it, God doesn't really fight battles. <laughs> I heard God saying as I was studying. He doesn't fight battles. God jumps into a situation and wins the battle for you. You see, when we have it under our own control, we are constantly fighting. But when God jumps in it and we take a resting place, then he wins it for us. That's why we can take a resting place. Because we know that when God is in it, then it is finished. He has already won the war. He has won the situation for me. As I plant the seeds of praise, as I plant the seeds of love, as I plant the seeds of trust, as I plant the seeds of hope, as I plant the seeds of joy, as I plant the seed of kindness and generosity, when I'm supposed to be complaining about what God is already taken care of, then he wins it for me. And then, as a woman going through a storm, for the first time in years, because now I've taken the position of a resting place, I've assumed my position in the resting place. Then I've got peace in my soul. In the midst of a storm, there is a calm beyond human understanding. And then they start asking me, you know, we see you going through your situation is obvious to us that it is of somebody that's supposed to be going through. But you seem to be calm. You seem to be enjoying life. How can you enjoy life when there's all of these things going on in your home, in your life, in your finances? How do you rest easy? knowing that you've got the situation at hand. <laughs> then you say, it is because I've assumed my resting place. God has already won the battle. When I moved away from the battlefield, when I moved away from the battle line, he took position and he won the battle for me. Just you wait and see. I am a woman who has chosen to be in her resting place.
I thank you.